It starts with a phone call. Ambulance service, what's the full address of the emergency? Right, is she still unconscious? She's gone floppy now, is she? A one-year-old child is unconscious. Dan talks a mother through CPR. OK, so lay her flat on her back on the ground and remove anything from under her head. So put your mouth over her mouth and nose, OK? We're going to blow two regular breaths into her lungs, about one second each, just enough to make the chest rise, OK? OK. In a typical day, more than a 1,000 phone calls come through to the Welsh Ambulance Service. Oh, was I laughing? Yeah, that's a lot better, OK. We followed staff behind the 999 calls, in the ambulances and in the emergency department of a Cardiff hospital during one of the worst crises in NHS history. There have been long ambulance delays and patients left waiting outside hospitals for days. The pressure on emergency call handlers is clear. It, it will take us anywhere up to two hours from that first call for us to get to you. Approximately 50 minutes. One hour, 45 minutes. Up to two hours for the hub to arrive. And the backlash from the public can be brutal. You know, I've been told many times in graphic ways how I'd be murdered. Um, you know, they'll say, I hope you crash on the way home. I hope you never make it back to your family tonight. I hope your family gets in this position and no one sends you an ambulance. It's just anger. It's just, it hurts and it's upsetting. And we drive home, you know, when those words go round in our minds whilst we fall asleep. But we've just got to remember they're just, they're just scared. I don't know why I'm getting so like, just about the abuse. It's so like. But I mean, it does affect you. Yeah. Okay, so tell me exactly what's happened. The ambulance delays have impacted the lives of many people. Like Nicola, who in July 2022 called 999 for her son Daniel. Ambulance service, what's the address of the emergency? Um, yeah, it's very sent. She got to his house 30 minutes after she made the call, but there was no sign of help. He was gasping for breath. Um, he, was, he was freezing. He was sweating, um, he had a job to keep his eyes open. With an ambulance still three hours away, she decided to drive Daniel to the nearest hospital. I was trying to breathe, breathe into his mouth and pump his chest and I, 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 didn't even, I didn't even know how to do it myself, but I was screaming, Daniel, don't die, and, and he's gone. So mad I am. Where's my boy in a box, stuck in a box? stuck in a box in my living room and he should be here. When somebody needs an ambulance, they meant to be there. They meant to come out. The Welsh Ambulance Service is reviewing this case. An inquest will be held in May 2023. Nicola is one of many left to wonder what could have happened if an ambulance had arrived sooner. And the what ifs weigh heavy on those sent to help as well. It's horrible, it's not nice. And the first thing we are constantly saying to our patients is, I'm sorry for the delay. Suzanne and John Wallace are a married couple who work together on the ambulance. The Welsh Ambulance Service says the biggest problem driving slow response times is the weights they face at hospitals. I think my record, I think we went to a call that had been outstanding for something like 15 hours. We got to them, they needed to go to hospital and then we queued on the back of the ambulance for umpteen hours as well. In December, across Wales, the ambulance service lost more than 30,000 hours queuing outside hospitals. On some days it was so bad, nearly half of all ambulances were stuck in queues. One paramedic spent four consecutive shifts queuing, unable to respond to a single 999 call. You're not going to believe this. We are the only ones here. Today is an unusually quiet day at the hospital. I haven't seen it like this since the pandemic. How's your chest pain? Is it still? Oh, yeah. 87-year-old Derek Seward is taken into A&E within 15 minutes. Still there or is it gone? The time the NHS says it should take for patients to be admitted to hospital. Last year, hospital staff were told improvements had to be made and that no ambulance should queue for more than four hours. Long delays persist but in Cardiff, notable improvements have been seen. 
Staff have set up initiatives to help reduce the strain, called virtual wards to monitor patients at home. Board. So this is a uh, medical short stay. And this ward was specially modified to help patients move more rapidly through accident and emergency. And they hope what they're doing at this hospital will have wider benefits. Um, we're seeing anything from 10 to 20 discharges a day, and that's a huge difference to patients. After the improvements seen in Cardiff, the Welsh Government has urged other health boards to study this approach. But ambulance response times across the country are still mired in delays. If you have another year now like you had last year? I, I don't know whether everyone can sustain that. I don't know. I don't know if people would want to stay in a job that is seeing I'm sat outside hospitals. For the staff in the hospital, in the ambulances and in the call centres, there remain profound challenges. The calls that we deal with, we'll remember them. We'll remember every last thing you said to us and the emotions that you showed. We carry that. And I think people don't realise that.